Hey guys, Coach Schoon here. Uh, first, just want to say I miss you guys. Uh, I'm praying for each and every one of you, uh, both for your physical and mental health, and just to get through this time of uh, this tough time that uh, that we're going through uh, with the coronavirus and just the the hand that we've been dealt. Um, when I found out uh, the core value that I drew was compete, I spent a lot of time thinking about what I want to talk about. Uh, both what compete means uh, as a core value to this team and what it means to me uh, personally and, and just some of the, the great competitors uh, that I've been around in my life with my family, uh, with some of the men that I've worked with, uh, and some of the players that I've coached in the 17 years that I've coached. Uh, you know, we've, we've gone over thus far some of, our, some of our core values, such as family, integrity, intensity, um, and, and as you look down that list uh, with family and what it means to us sort of uh, brotherhood, uh, loyalty and unconditional love, we think about integrity, uh, doing what is right, uh, thinking about intensity, playing with purpose, passion and juice, and then being a competitor, compete. That falls in behind that. And uh, what compete means to this team is that we'll do it anytime, anywhere. It doesn't matter who it's against or what we're facing. We're going to compete. And, uh, you know, as I thought about the word compete, the core value compete, I, it became pretty clear to me uh, what I needed to talk about and uh, really who I needed to talk about. And that would be the, the greatest competitor that I've ever had the opportunity to know. Uh, his name was Jackson Carter. Uh, Jackson was a, was a player of mine. Um, and I want to tell you about Jackson and just who he was uh as a player as a young man uh and how he performed and how he played and how he led uh not just as an athlete and a teammate but as a as a student and just in his in his walk in his daily life um jackson was a young man at a, at a school where i was at before i came to harbor uh, jackson was a senior he was uh he was a kid that that kind of had it all uh when you looked at He's a kid, you know, he's a handsome young man. He had the looks. He was an athlete. Uh, he was a, a starting wide receiver. Um, he really uh, had it together. He was sharp. He was funny. Uh, everybody enjoyed being around Jackson. He was a team leader. Uh, and, and I'll never forget the day uh, we were doing drills. And Jackson was a kid that, that I never had to ask, hey, push harder, work harder. He always set the tone. He set the tone for everybody that's there. He set the, the level, the expectation. And it's great as a, as a coach to have a player like Jackson that's willing to do that, uh, just not only lead with his voice, but lead with his actions. And uh, I'll never forget the day that Jackson walked up to me and said, uh, uh, Coach, I, I don't know what it is. I'm trying to go hard, but I, I just don't have a lot in the tank. I don't feel very good. And uh, and I knew right then that there was something that it wasn't right. It was in two a days as a senior year. Uh, it was in August. Um and I knew that Jackson wouldn't just walk up to me and say that. Uh, and so I told Jackson, I said, hey, man, just stay over here to the side. Help me coach because he was fully capable. of. He knew the ins and the outs of what we were trying to accomplish. And uh, I said, stand over here to the side and uh, and just help work with me. Help me. Help me. Help me. These guys get your breath back. Get, get going again. Uh, I knew something wasn't right, though. Jackson was pale. He just didn't look good. Uh, and I went and said something to the trainer afterwards. I said uh, to our trainer, hey, I think Jackson needs to get looked at. I don't know what's going on, if he just he's got the flu or what. Uh, but the, Jack, uh, the trainer had Jackson checked out. Uh, our trainer was hooked up with the, with the local hospital. Um, Jackson's parents were actually uh, on a short trip. And so the trainer helped him out getting checked in. And uh, he had some – Jackson was old enough. Uh, he had some tests ran. And uh, – um, the tests didn't come quite back how we'd want them to come back. Um, some of his counts weren't right. And so uh, the hospital, the local hospital recommended that Jackson uh, go ahead and be uh, sent down to Children's. And his parents, of course, came back and, and they went down, they headed down to Children's in Little Rock. And, and you know, really with a mindset of, hey, we don't know what it is, but everything's going to work out. And that was Jackson's approach from day one. Uh, you know, even though he didn't feel good that day, he knew something wasn't right. He was out of juice, uh, but uh, he knew he's he's going to be all right. And uh, he got down to Little Rock, and they ran more tests, and 
And I'll never forget, I, I uh, made the trip down. I was close with Jackson. I made the trip down to Little Rock uh, with uh, with our head coach. And um, and we walked into the hospital. And, and um, I remember uh, being told uh, for the first time that Jackson has leukemia. And, uh, and I, immediate, the first thing that went through my mind was, you know, it was fear and of, of what the possibilities obviously are with, with this, uh, with this cancer. And, uh, you know, I, I look over at Jackson and, and here's this kid in a hospital bed. It's his senior year in high school. And he has every reason to think, why me? Uh, you might ask, well, coach, what's this have to do with this football team? Uh, what's this have to do with, with, uh, you know, where we're at, why are you sharing something in your past about another individual really that, that we don't even know, or that you don't even know. And the, the truth is, is that it has everything to do with it. Uh, Jackson, like you, uh, had some things taken away from him. This was it for him. That's not like you, you still have time. Jackson was a senior. This was his last time, his last show. And, uh, he got told, uh, that he wasn't going to get to play football. And uh, he approached it like nobody I've ever seen approach something uh, in this way. Uh, he, he immediately looked at how can I serve this team? How can I, what can I do on a daily basis to help this team be successful? How can I help this team win? And really what he was saying is how can I still compete and help this team be successful? Because see, all the things that we focus on core value with family and integrity and intensity and compete and toughness. He had all those things and he was willing to compete every day. He made a personal decision to compete every day, regardless of, uh, of the hand that he was dealt, just like you've been dealt a hand. Now his hand was much worse off than, than your hand that you've been dealt uh, with the situation where we had to learn from home and, and we don't get to go through some spring ball and we don't get to, you know, do some things that we'd like to do, but it's very, very similar. How are you going to deal with the hand that you've been dealt? Uh, you know, following going back from uh, children's I drove home and I'm, I'm driving home and I'm thinking about how am I going to approach this as a coach? How am I going to approach this just in, you know, just how, how am I going to approach this with my relationship with Jackson? Uh, and, you know, as I, as I talked to Jackson, Jackson didn't want to talk about him. He wanted to talk about the team. He wanted to talk about, Coach, what can I do? How, how can I still help? That was his whole motive, his whole purpose right away. Again, the young man that was going to start for us, a young man that was a good athlete and a good football player, and was told, you're not going to play anymore. But his mindset went, how can I compete still to help this team be successful? And, you know, Jackson did everything. We made him a, a, a coach with us and a coach from a distance. Because unfortunately, because of Jackson's condition, he could not be around other people because of his immune system. And uh, so he couldn't be around large groups of people. So he couldn't come to any practices or any games. And he was in the hospital for an extended period of time. And uh, Jackson's condition uh, didn't get a lot better. Um, a matter of fact, uh, you know, the first thing that Jackson uh, tweeted, and this is just a mentality that he had, is he said, I have leukemia it's not the end of the world. Meaning basically saying, I got this guys, I'm going to win. Okay. That's what he was telling people. Don't feel sorry for me. I'm going to compete and I'm going to win. And, uh, you know, Jackson's condition didn't get better. And, and eventually um, he was transferred to a place called MD Anderson in Houston. And uh, my conversations, I talked to Jackson after practices and we talk about how practice went that day, what we installed, what we were working on. Uh, then the season approached and the season came, we talked after games. Uh, and of course he got the opportunity to, to watch some of the games. Uh, we didn't have this, uh, this thing that we had, we call zoom now or, or screencast by or anything like that at that time. Uh, but we still had some, some uh, pathways that we could use to keep Jackson attached and really to use Jackson and some of the things that he could still bring as a leader for our football team and just as a, as a high character individual that we wanted around our football team and, and wanted around the coaches and players. 
And uh, so I, I stayed in contact with Jackson um, and until he went, he went to MD Anderson and, and things uh, slowed down as far as our conversations, not by choice, but just Jackson was going through a rough period of time. And I remember again, driving down to Houston uh, again with, with uh, my head coach and, and I was the wide receiver coach uh, at this particular place. And I'm driving down and he's one of my wide receivers, obviously. And, uh, I'm driving down to Houston and, and uh, we come to MD Anderson and I had no idea what MD Anderson was uh, until I walked in the door. And uh, guys, uh, all the problems that we face on a daily basis, all the things that uh, we find unfair, um, go to MD Anderson for a day and you'll see in a hurry um, that we really don't have a lot of problems. Um, you talk about some courageous individuals, some people that can teach us all life lessons. Uh, that's the, the children at MD Anderson, uh, that are facing their battle with cancer. And Jackson was one of these children. Um, he was one of these kids and I, I didn't, you know, we drove down to, to Houston and unfortunately because of Jackson's situation, I didn't get to see Jackson, even though we'd gone all the way down there. But of course we understood why we set out with his dad in the lobby and, and for the first time in the in the process, I, I knew where we were at. Um, I knew that it was bad. Uh, Jackson's father was a, uh, man, he's, he's a winner and, uh, he's a strong man and an example to all fathers and how you should operate as a man when you're going through what he was going through and what his family was going through. And, uh, and he pulled me aside and, and he talked to me and, and I knew without him telling me, I knew. Um, a few short weeks later, I drove home and, uh, a few short weeks later, I'll never forget this. I, I was on the, the white river, um, and, um, I was still in the cabin that I was at and, and I'd stayed in contact with the, with the Carters and I was in the cabin I was at and, and, uh, I received a phone call, uh, it was a little before six o'clock in the morning and. And I looked down and I saw the number and I didn't want to see the number. And it was Jackson's dad. And, and he said, uh, coach, I want to let you know, uh, Jackson, uh, has passed away and, uh, he's gone home. And, uh, you know, it, <laughs> it was something, it was a phone call. I didn't want to receive. I knew I, there was a good chance I was going to receive it. Uh, and, Immediately, you know, you, you go through the, the heartbreak and the sorrow and just the whole process of, of what has just happened. Uh, but I had time that day to sit back and I had time. I, I just went out on the river and I, I thought about what Jackson was and what he did, uh, how he lived, how he fought. If you're going to give a definition of a competitor, it's Jackson Carter. I had the opportunity. Uh, that his parents called me and asked me to, to speak at his funeral. And I've never been so honored in my life. The first thing I shared at the funeral was, uh, at that time I'd been a coach for 12 years. And, uh, just by average of the players that I had from years at that time, I had had, uh, somewhere around 1800, uh, players in those 12 years that I had coached. And I said that, uh, you know, Jackson Carter stood out to me above all 1800 because of the life that he lived and how he fought. And I talked to him about how Jackson's impact was on the team and how he was a servant and how he chose to compete and fight in a different way. He got the hand that he was dealt not one day, guys, not one day from August until the day that he passed did Jackson Carter ever say this, why me? Not one day did he complain. Not one day did he mope. Not one day did he feel sorry for himself when truthfully he had every reason to feel sorry for himself. This was supposed to be his year, his senior year. He was supposed to be his turn. He was supposed to be the guy. But instead of feeling sorry for himself, he chose to fight for his team. He chose to compete 
to help his team be successful. The core values that he had in his life were very similar to the core values that we have as a football team. And he lived those core values every day of his life. I closed my time of speaking at his funeral with this. Jackson Carter did not lose because we're here today. Jackson Carter is a winner. He's a winner. He's a winner for a couple of reasons. Number one, the reason that I can't go in depth with because I'm a public school teacher, but he had a personal relationship with an individual uh, that made everything okay in the end. Number two, he's a winner because of how he fought, how he loved his teammates, his family. Yeah, it's how he made those around him better and how he made those around him them, him feel. He saw his mother, his father, his brother, his friends, his coaches, how they were scared for him. And Jackson handled it by simply putting a smile on his face and grinding and fighting every day. Jackson Carter is a competitor. He's the definition of a competitor anytime, anywhere. Now, I want to translate that again back to where we're at. How does this relate to Harbor football? How does this relate to you? We're in a situation that we've never been in before. We're in a situation where you're being asked to learn from home. You're being asked to compete from home. You're being asked to prepare from home. And you have a choice every day how you're going to do that. Unfortunately, our society, it tells us it's okay to be soft. It tells us you don't have to compete. But the truth is, guys, is this. You'll have to compete every day for the rest of your life. You have to compete for your children. You have to compete for your wife. You have to compete at work. You have to learn to compete to be successful. Society is wrong. It's not about just being part of it. It's not about just getting to, uh, to participate. It's about learning to compete. The things that we get out of this football team, the things that we get out of this short little situation that we're in will impact us for the rest of our life because of this, how we handle it. And I know how you're going to handle it as Harbor football players. You're going to say, we got this anytime, anywhere. Guys, I love you. I look forward to seeing you soon.